Breakups are often the symptom of problems in a relationship. My workbook series, The Knowledge, is focused on helping you change your life in four key areas. Retaining the information that I teach, personal growth, improving your relationships, and of course, reattracting your ex. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. Hi there, I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about crucial ways to understanding your partner. Now this is a really important video oh, yes. because what we're going to be looking at today is how your partner's past is going to influence how they handle things in a relationship. Yes. Okay. I have talked a little bit about my life and you know there used to be a lot of arguing between my mom and my first stepfather and my second stepfather but growing up in a house like that impacts you. Absolutely. And so if you grow Absolutely. up in a home yeah. where things get violent or close to violent or threatening or scary it's going to traumatize you and it's going to directly impact your ability to communicate and how you talk with your partner when you have struggles. That's right. And you want to hope that you have a partner who's sensitive enough to see beyond that. Yeah. Right. So Margaret and I are going to talk about this today and how it can help you because you really want to understand what your partner went through to get why they do the things they do. Okay. All right. This is the story of Dwight and Karen. Dwight jumped and got really angry at Karen every time she shut the door, even a little bit loudly. Mm -hmm. Whether at home or in the car, it didn't make a difference to him. After one incident, Dwight said she closed the door so loud it frightened him. Karen responded with, I didn't shut the door that loudly. Why do you overreact so much? Mm -hmm. Dwight shared that his parents often slammed doors when they were fighting, which was all of the time. As a child, he used to sit down on the floor in the corner of his room, gather his toys around him, and try to be small and quiet to escape the sense of fear and anxiety Wow. he felt while his parents were fighting. Yeah. Now you got a picture of this poor little guy in the corner of the room, probably I bet with his toys in front of him, he probably had his soldiers protecting him because he didn't know what was going to happen next. Yeah. Um, and he tried to look small and kind of invisible. Um, that way no, no one came and yelled at him. Well it's, that's the issue. Um, when he heard doors slamming nearby, he got more scared because that meant somebody was near his bedroom. Yep, and right. if that means stranger, you know, danger. Yep, right. That's right. I was going to say stranger danger. It's yeah. not stranger though. No, it's worse when it's uh, somebody you know. Yeah. When his door was sharply opened, usually one of his parents would address him angrily. And now they're going to take it out on him. Yep. They're going to exactly. displace their anger right. on him. Yep. Your little brat, you did this and this. He always jumped as a child when this happened. Now as an adult, he still jumped. He described how his body jumps and tenses up. His heart races, he starts breathing fast, he sweats and tenses up like he's ready to fight an intruder. And that's exactly what happens when we're in a panic state. Blood, you remember, literally goes to our fists in case we have to defend ourselves. Yeah. So I'm sure there's much more to this story. But this poor little kid, Okay, and it's no wonder he jumps in adulthood. But how sensitive of his partner to pursue it, and how good of him to be willing to talk about it. So I'm sure they can revolve, resolve this problem now, um, yeah. even with some ease. Okay, in trying to fix relationships, some partners pursue and some withdraw. Now, his partner, fortunately for him, pursued the issue pursued him and pursued the issue. Otherwise, they would have stayed at a standoff probably for a couple of hours. Okay? Um, withdrawing. Partners who withdraw often have gotten the message to dismiss or avoid their emotions. 
Patients may have coached them to toughen up and be a man. Mm -hmm. Both of these are indirect say, ways of saying, if you have feelings, certainly don't show them. We'd rather you didn't have them, but if you must, don't show them. Yeah. Okay? The withdrawing partner gets all logical and distrusts emotions, becomes objective, and goes in, and then goes into shutdown mode. How many times have you seen that happen? Um, well, we have to be logical about this. I'll never forget a couple sitting in my office, and I saying to them, how do you think we should we begin? And the guy said to me, you have to understand I'm very, very logical. I translated that to mean don't approach me with any emotion, lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is an attempt to calm things down and reconnect, and I had not thought about that quite that way prior to reading this article. That when you withdraw, you're not just trying to stop communication, you're trying to let things calm down. Yes. Right? Yep. Yeah. And I talked to a guy today who actually talked about that. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. And how his partner would, you know, didn't like it when he wanted some space, mm -hmm. but, you know, Sometimes we just need to let our emotions cool down and realize, all right, I'm probably making this a bigger deal than what it really is. Yeah, uh, but I had not thought of it quite that way, and that's a very handy way to look at it. So the person isn't just withdrawing. They're, in another way, still trying to get back on the same page with you. Well, people get upset when people withdraw um, because they feel emotionally unavailable for yeah. a period of time. And they're time. afraid you're going to abandon them. Yes. Yeah. But not only do you suppress the good emotions when you withdraw, um, but you also withdraw, suppress the other emotions, the good ones, that make it possible for you to be vulnerable by showing emotion. So when you shut down, just remember that it's going to take a little bit to come back because you have to kind of recover from withdrawing. But I had never seen it as a reach out to get back on the same page, and there that is. Yeah. Now the pursuer, it's easier to understand the pursuer. The pursuer is really pursuing to get you back, even though they may appear frustrated and angry. Yeah. You are trying, you are trying to get an answer. Um, They're what, desperately trying to reconnect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want an answer from you. I want to know what time you want to leave tonight. And what are you going to say? I don't know yet. See? That's what you always <laughs> say. For example, won't this person answer me when I ask them a perfectly reasonable question, why did you break up with me? Why won't this person interact with me to solve the problem? Well, even if somebody says to you, if, if, if they say, why did you break up with me? No matter what answer you get, you're just going to continue to control it or Absolutely. badger or manipulate. Yeah, right. yeah. So there's no good answer that's going to get you out of this mess. Yeah. When I ask him or her why, they won't talk to me, they simply shut down further. The more you ask for a solution, the louder the pursuer, the pursuer's voice becomes, right? The more you're saying, I'm not gonna answer you, the louder the pursuer gets. Yeah. As one client said about his pursuing partner, when she gets angry at me, now I don't react like I used to. I can see through the hurt she is experiencing behind it. Now that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, that he had obviously had a partner who would get crazy asking him questions and trying to solve problems, but he had learned now not to take it personally and get so upset. Yeah. So congratulations to this couple, they're making progress. The pursuing partner's intent is to get on the same emotional page. Connected. Yeah, to feel connected and close. However, they can be very persistent and the pursuer may even follow you from room to room. I remember seeing a hilarious movie with an, with an example of that in it, where the guy is trying to get out of the apartment and he's walking out and she's following him, asking him worse and louder questions at every, every possible turn. Yeah. All right. Now, why won't you tell me why you moved out of the house a month ago to go live in the chicken coop in the backyard? Why, why, why? I told you. You need to tell me why. I did tell you. Why? I told you because, you know, we were fighting and I, I wanted space. That's not an answer. It's an answer. Well, how are things in the chicken coop? It's not all that it's cracked up to be. That's terrible. I hope you're not trying to be funny. I think you're just chicken. You need to tell me why. I thought that was an excellent joke. <laughs> excellent, yes. <laughs> My mother says you should tell me why now. Your mother says you should tell me now why. Why are you telling tell me you. why? 
I keep telling you, I need space. We keep fighting. Don't worry. I've had enough of you and your eggs. Don't worry. I'll have your Chia Pet collection all packed up and ready to go when you want to leave. Fine. I'll just buy more Chias. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to some of you guys? Probably. But anyway, much of the fighting that we see around, uh, this would be kind of stonewalling, carried to ridiculous degrees, but most of the fighting that you see around pursuing and withdrawing is in and of itself an attempt to reconnect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, oftentimes the person that in the situation I was in would get cold. Yeah. Right? Because... And stonewall. Yeah, because it's not working when I'm telling you the reason why. It, my reason doesn't matter. As long as it's not the same reason that you're wanting to hear, my reason doesn't matter. Right? Right. So... Yeah. You get caught up in this pattern and it just makes it go from bad to worse. So you got to be aware of what happened in your partner's childhood because if they saw fighting all the time that they're going to struggle when these things come up. It's going to bring up the trauma. It's going to make right. them feel like the small child that's helpless and they just got to get away. They don't want to make it worse. Sometimes your partner really is just trying to get away from the situation right. to cool down so they don't escalate it and make things worse. Yep. But this just reminds us that even in the middle of a crazy fight, you're still really trying to reconnect. Yep. But if you think about being a kid, um, like the, the kid we just talked about here, Mr. Dwight, um, and you needed to get hold of your mother because you were hurt or scared or felt like you were in an emergency and you couldn't get a response, can you imagine? Yeah. Or if you were alone in your crib and hungry or scared or something was wrong and you couldn't get a response, imagine what that's like. And this can be a reflective experience yeah. um, that comes up here. Tell me, talk to me, answer me, fix it for me. Yeah. So just because you might have a partner that doesn't want to talk about things in the moment and they want to let thing, things cool down doesn't mean that they're chicken. <laughs> you couldn't pull it to a better place, could you? Now that's a really terrible pun because I don't even know how often people say it nowadays, but small <laughs> eggs used to be called pullet eggs and we're continuing to make these ridiculous egg jokes. Absolutely. So we hope you laughed. <laughs> and we're no dumb clucks. We just want to be clear. All right. Well, if you didn't like it, the yolk's on you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think we better end this one before I think we, we lose better. a yeah. lot of subscribers. Yeah. <laughs> if you liked this video and found it helpful, put a like on there. Margaret did a lot of research to come up with this one for you. Yes, not to mention my, my creative writing. Or our horrible acting ability. Yes. Uh, if you want our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching that works for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is also available for Skype coaching. Yes, indeed. Feel free to sign up with me. I promise not to met, tell you bad jokes unless you ask. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk to you soon.